Hi, I'm Glenn Dewis. Welcome to episode 19. And this week, I want to show you a retouching special effect, which is going to be great for those of you who like to do compositing. Okay, so the retouching special effect that I want to show you this week is how we can make something look battered and beaten with lots of dents and scratches in it. And I'm going to do it on the pitch you can see on screen now. Now this is my Iron Man picture. It's not finished by a long way. There's a lot more, lot more to do on it. But I'm at the stage now where I'm actually adding in all the battle damage. So if I just turn off the top group here, which is where I've grouped all these little bits where I'm starting to add in all these dents. If I just turn that on and off, you can see now when you look at Iron Man, how he's got all this denting in his chest area, some on his head, a little bit on his shoulders. And it's that that what I want to show you how to do in this particular um, short session. So how do we do that? Well, there's lots of ways you could do it, but a way that I found to do this, which was really quick, was to actually use pictures of cars that have actually got some damage on them already. So I literally found, I went scouring around the net and found a load of pictures similar to this kind of thing here, where we can see we've got a car bumper with a dent in it. And I can actually use that to make it look as if the body armor on Iron Man has got the dent. So here's how I do it. I'm just gonna get my lasso tool, my freehand uh, lasso, tool and make a very very rough selection around this dent here on the back of this car. Then I'm going to go to edit and copy and then go to my Iron Man image and then go to edit paste. Of course I could also just drag it over into the tabs at the top here to bring it straight into the picture. I'm then going to get my move tool. I'm going to reposition this where I want it and I want this bit to be kind of like on his chest area around here. So I'll use my move tool, drag it around, Obviously, I can then go to if like free transform if I want to, and I can rotate it, something like that. I'm going to lower the opacity on this layer as well, just so I can really check where I'm placing it in. So I'll drag it around, put it maybe somewhere there. In fact, let's just go to free transform again. I'm just going to resize it just a little bit. Don't want it to be too big, something like that could be good. Yeah, something like that is good. Bring the opacity back up. Now, there's lots of ways that I could blend this in. The first one, talking about blending in will be a blend mode. So I'm gonna choose something like overlay. And that doesn't do a bad job. You know, it kind of takes on the effect. If I just kind of zoom in just a little bit here, it kind of takes on the effect. But for me, it kind of looks a little bit too saturated and maybe it's too much of a dent in there. I don't want it to be quite as strong. Well, here's how we can take it up another level. What we can do is use a filter. So I'm gonna to go to the top of the screen here, go to the filter menu, and before I use any filter, I'm gonna convert for smart filters because that's then gonna give me the flexibility of coming in later on and making any changes if I feel that I've not done enough or maybe need to apply it just a little bit more. Once I've done that, I'm gonna go back to the filter menu and I'll choose other and then high pass. The great thing about using the high pass is if I just drag this radius all the way down to zero, 0.1, I'll put my cursor outside, I'll click on the chest area where that dent is, and we'll just zoom out by clicking on the minus sign just here. So this is our dent. Now, as I start to drag the radius slider over to the right and just increase the radius, you can start to see that some detail now is starting to show through in the preview, but also on the chest area of Iron Man. Now, the more I bring this across to the right-hand side and increase the radius, the more of that dent I can start to show through. So I can control now how dented that chest looks rather than just having to stick with what the original dent looked like, if that makes sense. So we can go to something like there maybe would look pretty good. Then I can click OK, and if I turn that on and off, you can see that it's starting to look pretty good. But I've got, obviously, excess bits that I don't want. So let's just close that down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a layer mask to this dent here. I'm then going to get a brush, and I'm going to make sure that my foreground color is black because we know that white reveals and black conceals. There are parts of this dent I want to conceal now because I only want it in this chest area. So painting in with a black brush at 100%, I'll just come in and just remove it off some of the areas here and something like that. So now let's just double click on the hand tool now to go to 100% view. Now I'll turn that layer 
on and off. And you can see now that we've started to add in some dents. Really, really realistic. It's kind of blended in. It actually looks like that's the body armor. It's not too contrasty. But the great thing is, because we use this as a smart filter, I could then double click on the high pass here where it says high pass in the layers, and then go back into the filter to again, adjust it how much or how little I want it to show. And you can have a lot of fun doing this. Now, obviously what you could also do is go and find lots more pictures of cars with all different dents in, and then place those all over whatever it is that you're trying to make it look dented. But what you can also do is just press Command or Control J to duplicate what you've just done, get your Move tool from the top of the toolbar there, or pressing V on your keyboard, and drag that to wherever you want it to be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of dent in his head. So let's just zoom in on his, uh, his head here. I'll get my uh, free transform, I can rotate it. So we'll go for something like that. In fact, there might be something I've already hidden in that layer mask that I could use. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over to the layers panel now, over here, and I'm gonna right click on the layer mask and it's gonna bring up these options. And one of them says delete layer mask. So now I can see the whole of that dent that we actually have. If I just take it back to normal, you can see there's our original dent. So I'll change it back to overlay. I can then use my move tool to move it around, something like there. Then I can add another layer mask, get a black brush, and we'll just take it off areas that I don't want. So I can actually reveal bits by bringing back the whole layer by deleting the layer mask. So something like that, turn that layer on and off, on and off. There we go. So let's just double click on the hand tool now to go back to full view, put these two into a group so you can see now the effect that we're very, very quickly building up. Now, if I just show you again what I've done so far on my own image here, this is actually what I'm gonna be working on a little bit more now. Here's some of the battle damage, again, with all the scratches that you can see just around where all the dents are. But there you go, that's just very quickly how you can have a lot of fun adding in dents and battle damage to whatever image it is that you're working on. Probably more suitable for people who are doing compositing. Okay, thanks for watching this episode. I hope you like the content. If you do find yourself using that dented and battered technique in any of your own pictures, please drop me a line to glenn at glennjewish.com because I'd love to see the kinds of results that you're getting. In the meantime though, I'd really appreciate it if you haven't already that you click on the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I post each and every week. And also it'd be great if you could share this channel with anybody else that you know that might like to see the kind of content that I am putting out. But for now, that's all from me. I'll see you next time.